All right, guys, you got a DVD player that doesn't read DVDs or CDs? Well, I want to show you how to fix it. First off, try cleaning it with a Q-tip and some rimming alcohol. Um, this goes for pretty much everything, uh, not just only these portable DVD players, but also like, you know, the, the box versions that you have for your TV set, you know, but you have to do a little bit more work to those in order to, uh, get to the laser, you know, you have to take the cover off and usually there's just a few Phillips head screws. Make sure you unplug it first. You know, you pop them screws out and usually, uh, you know, the top cover just comes right off and you have full access to the laser. So, if it's a slot load DVD player, then that's a different story. <laughs> but anyway, you can try cleaning the laser with a uh, Q-tip. with some. Just put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the tip here and just gently clean the laser. You don't want to push too hard. A little bit of movement in the laser is not bad, but just don't, you know, force it. And then just let it dry for a few seconds. Now, if that does not work, then look on the back of the laser. And usually, there will be some potentiometers, little trim pots. Now, one of them will be for the DVD, and one of them will be for the CD. Uh, depending on what your problem is, whether, let's say, the DVD player, you know, just the DVD stopped playing. But, it'll still read CDs. So what you do is sometimes there'll be some lettering on the back here. Some will have like a C on there or a D, uh, meaning CD or, or uh, DVD trim pot. Some will not, and you'll just have to guess. So what you do is you'll have to have a multimeter. I mean, you can do it without one, but you'll just risk blowing up your laser in no time. Um, you'll have to set it to ohm scale, usually around 20k ohms is a... Uh, a good start. <clears throat> so you go to the back of the laser here and these little trim pots will have two little points on the side there. Those two points is what you want to measure. So you take your two leads here and you put them on those two points and it'll read, let's say if it reads 7 K ohms on the 20 K ohm scale. Then you would just simply um, depending on your model, you would have to turn it counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, so you'll, you'll have to figure that out too. So just measure it, turn it one way. If the measurement goes up, then you know you did you did it wrong because uh, you, you have to go down. So what you want to do is get it down to, let's say, 6.5. That's a little too much, really. Um, I would actually probably go down to maybe 6.8 and then try it. Uh, let's, say, let's say if you turn this too much and you get like 5 instead of at, from 7, <laughs> then turn that back up to at least 6.5 or 6.8. Um, just go down in like 0.2 increments, just real small increments. And once you go down, try your DVD. If it plays, great. If it doesn't, go down a little bit more again. And just keep doing that until you get your DVDs to read. Now, if you go down too low, yes, you will risk burning up the laser. But if it doesn't work anyway, don't worry about it. But like I said, you'll have to find out which one's a CD and which one's a DVD. Like if it doesn't have those letterings, then you're not going to know, right? Well, try one first. Go down a little bit. If it still doesn't work, go down it. Go down a little bit more. Like if it was at uh, 7 and uh, you're down at 6 already and it still doesn't work, then I would say just put it back up to 7, like where it was, and then try the other one. And then, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll get the right one that time. So that's pretty much how you would adjust the laser. All you're doing is adjusting the current to the laser. Um, you're lessening the resistance to the laser which will you know it'll light up brighter to be able to read um, <clears throat> just from age you know they they get weak some of your DVD players like this one will be way different 
you know, you won't be able to get a screwdriver down in this area. But as you can see, there's no trim pots right here anyway. They're actually at the bottom. We can just maybe barely see the little shiny pieces in there. I'm not sure, but but they're down there. And for that, you would have to, you know, remove a bunch more stuff. I think under these are probably some screws and there's some screws all the way around here, little tiny ones. That'll take the back cover off. Now, like on some of them TV set top, you know, boxes or whatever, um, like the regular DVD players with the, you know, the tray that comes out or whatever, for those you'd have to flip them upside down and take the screws out of them to take the lid off to be able to uh, get to the laser there. Um, which is usually not too bad, but you know you have to get in there to clean the laser. And you know, like I said, if that doesn't work, try uh, adjusting the potentiometers on the back there, uh, just one at a time, and make sure you know you write them, write the uh, resistance values down before you start, so that if you mess up, you can put them right back to the original. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah. That's how you uh, repair one, or hopefully repair one. Like I said, it doesn't always work, but, you know, usually it does. Um, if it does not work, then you're probably just going to have to junk it, because normally you won't be able to buy replacement parts uh, for them. Um, you can try calling the manufacturer to see if they have a parts department to where you can order a laser for it. Um... You know, you just have to, you know, call around and see if you can get some parts or look on eBay even. Um, but these DVD players are actually pretty cheap now. Uh, you know, twenty, thirty dollars, forty bucks maybe, for a decent one. You know, so try this, and you know, if it doesn't work, just junk it and buy you a new one.